Hello everyone. In this video, I'm going to talk about loose structure of polyatomic ions. I'm sure you already watched the previous video when I drew Lewis structure of 10 covalent compounds. I may ask you to remember the knowledge of Lewis structure methodology we applied over there and extend it to polyatomic ions. First, I'm going to remind you ions in our chemistry class. We have two types of ions, cations and anions. And I'm sure you remember that for cations, we talk about positive ion, and for anion, we talk about negative ion. When we are going to talk about definition for each one based on the losing and gaining number of electrons, so cations lose electrons and anions gain electrons. So we already talked about this concept earlier. So I'm sure you remember that one when we say losing electron and gaining electron, what does that mean? So here for this concept, we are going to count number of electrons. So it means we need to know what does that mean, losing and gaining electron for ions. So one thing we should do whenever we have ions, it doesn't matter cations or anions, based on their definition, we need to apply charge number to count number of total valence electrons. So when we have cations, you need to subtract charge number from total valence electrons, from total valence electrons. And in contrast, whenever we have an ion, you need to, because anions gain electron, so you need to add charge number to total number of valence electrons, so to total valence electrons. So let me work on a couple examples earlier. Assume that we have NH4 positive. We have ammonia. We have, sorry, ammonium, ammonium, positive ion, polyatomic ion. So whenever I'm going to count total valence electrons, I need to consider this ion and apply the charge for finding total valence electrons. So it doesn't matter one positive, two positive. So as long as we have the number, you need to subtract. If we have, for example, CO3, two negative, if we have carbonate. So whenever you are going to count total valence electrons, you need to add this number, two, to total number of valence electrons. So we are going to work on some examples here and see how it works. One thing I'm going to talk about that earlier, then working on the example, we draw Lewis structure of polyatomic ions in one bracket. So we write a one bracket and we report charge, we report charge here to make sure we have expressed that we have ions. So it's not mandatory, but we prefer to do like this one to express that we work on one polyatomic ion. So let me work on some examples. First, I'm going to focus on polyatomic cations. So I'm going to focus on polyatomic cations. In our chemistry class, we already work on two types of polyatomic cations. One is NH4, one positive, we call that ammonium. Ammonium. So based on the methodology, I'm going to say I need to find total bonding and non-bonding valence electrons. First, group number for nitrogen 5 plus we have four hydrogen atom. Each hydrogen has one valence electron. And let me write that one by another color. For cations, you need to subtract. You need to subtract 
charge number from total number of valence electrons. So you need to subtract here, minus one. So let me write like this, minus one. You need to subtract this number to get the total number of valence electrons. So we have totally eight. So as we see here, the only difference between the polyatomic ions and covalent compounds is only this side. When you add this term or you are going to subtract this term. So please pay attention to this difference between these two types of compounds and polyatomic ions. Then you need to draw NH4, one nitrogen and four hydrogens around the central atom. Then we are going to make a bond. Let me drop up bonds by blue color. Two, four, six, eight. So I have eight electrons here. When you subtract, there is no electrons left. So you cannot add any electrons to this ion. When we are going to count number of electrons for each element, hydrogens have two. And if we look at the nitrogen, as you see here, nitrogen already have eight electrons. So we are done with the Lewis structure. As I said earlier in the previous slide, I may ask you, Whenever we have polyatomic ions, you just need to draw them in the bracket and report the charge. So we have this positive charge here. What does that mean? It means we draw Lewis structure of this ion, this polyatomic ion, and this polyatomic ion has this positive charge. Again, it's not mandatory, but I want to ask you to please keep in mind for some textbook like yours, you may have this convention. I'm going to work on another polyatomic ions, H3O+. We call this polyatomic ion hydronium ion, hydronium ion, and we are going to work on this in acid space chapters by more details. I'm going to work on total balance and non-bonding electrons. So, I'm going to say hydrogen, we have three hydrogen, each hydrogen has one electron plus oxygen six, and we have positive charge here. So when we have positive charge, it means our cation already lost electron, losing electron, so we're gonna need to subtract this number of electrons, is equal to eight. So three plus six minus one is going to be eight. I'm gonna draw H3O plus, oxygen, hydrogens on the left, right, or on the bottom. Then make a bond between central and terminals, as you know that, and we have three bonds, it means six electrons. So I'm gonna write six bonds, six bonding electrons here. So when, when you subtract, it means two electrons should be added here. We don't add electrons to hydrogens, so we should add electrons to the central atom. Central atom means oxygen. If we count number of electrons for oxygen, we will see that we have eight valence electrons. Two, four, six, eight. So right now, I'm gonna put our ions in the bracket and report the charge. For the next example, I'm going to focus on anions. I'm going to focus on polyatomic anions. So let me start with NO2, one negative. I'm sure you can call that nitride. So I'm going to draw Lewis structure of nitrite. So TBN, we we'll start with adding total valence electrons. We are going to add the number of valence electrons for each element. Five for nitrogen, group number five, oxygen, two oxygen, group number six. And we have this negative charge here. It means this ion already gained one electron, so we add one electron here. We add number of electrons. So negative means we already 
have one more electron. So you are going to calculate that one. You are going to have 18 electrons here. I'm going to write N and two oxygen here. Make a bond between central and terminal. So we have two times two, two bonds. So four electrons. We subtract and we are going to have 14 electrons. We need to add 14 electrons here. Six electrons to each terminal. So totally I use 12 electrons. Two electrons left and I add to central atom nitrogen. We count number of electrons for terminal atoms. Nitrogen. It has two, four, six. Right now I need to remove, I need to borrow two electrons from the terminals. I need to remove two electrons. Both atoms are same. Both atoms are same. So I may have a resonance structure for this one. So I remove electrons from oxygen on the left and add a bond here. Two, four, six, eight. So we do have double bond here. So you may remove electrons from oxygen on the right. So you may say, I'm going to remove electron from oxygen on the right and make double bond. So you can easily do that. So two, four, six, eight. So we are done with this iron. This is the two resonance structures here. So I'm going to report by this double sides arrow. And we have iron. We write in the bracket and charge here. So this is one example of resonance structure with polyatomic ions. I may ask you to work on NO31 negative. Please work on nitrate ion. Nitrate ion. Same strategy. So TBN. Five, we have three oxygen, six, and we do have an ion. So we should add number of valence electrons here. Charge should be added to number of valence electrons. So I already added. So we are going to have 24. NO3. So I'm going to write N, oxygen, oxygen, oxygen here. Make a bond between central and terminals. The one, two, three bonds means six electrons. So minus six. So totally we have 18 non-bonding electrons. I have to add 18 non-bonding electrons here, six to each one. As you see here, we are going to count number of valence electrons for the central atom, two, four, six. We need to have two more electrons. So right now you have three elements, three oxygen atoms that you may remove electrons from them. So it means you may have three resonance structure. So I'm going to remove from this element and make double bond. So I'm going to write two, four, six, eight. So this is the Lewis structure for NO3 in the, front, in the bracket, negative charge, or you may write like this one. N O three like this, or you may write like this one. So let me write like this. So you may have double bond between oxygen on the left, oxygen on the right, or oxygen on the bottom. So three resonance structure. As you see here, it depends on the number of terminals if we can have double bond. So it looks double bond is going to rotate between these three terminals. And finally, how about if we have CO3 2 negative. If we have carbonate 
what do you think about Lewis structure of carbonate? I'm gonna ask you to work on this, and this is the one example you can apply that one for other ones as well with two negative charges. So I'm gonna write carbon group number four, oxygen group number six times three because three oxygen, and we have two more electrons. So we are going to add two electrons here. So we are going to have 24 electrons. I'm gonna write C, oxygen, oxygen, oxygen here. Three bonds, it means six electrons. So we are going to have 18. So let me write by this color. 18. So six electrons to each terminal. Then we are going to count number of valence electrons for carbon. As you see here, we have six electrons. So you should remove electrons from oxygen. Three oxygen. It means three possibility to do that one. So I'm gonna remove electrons from this and make a double bond here. So right now I have double bond between oxygen on the left and carbon atoms. So this is the Lewis structure of carbonate ion. I'm gonna write two negative. So you may draw Lewis structure of carbonate. Here we have like this. And one more, if we have carbon atom, double bond between oxygen on the top, and finally, like this one. You need to draw non-pair electrons for terminal atoms because we need to make sure our elements follow octet rule. And the last example, if we are going to work on CN1 negative, I'm sure you know. How to work with this one, let me write. I'm gonna keep the space here, T, B, N for cyanide. So four, five, and we are going to add one electron here, we add plus one. I'm gonna keep the space for one more concept, that is why it's going to be like this. So one positive, because we already added the electron. So we are going to have 10 electrons here. Then C and one bond between them. So one bond means minus two. Totally we have eight valence electrons should be reported here. So we don't have terminal or central atom here. We have only two atoms. So you are going to add electrons to each one. I'm gonna add electrons to nitrogen and then pair with the carbon atoms. Both are same, it doesn't matter. So we do have eight electrons for nitrogen but four electrons for carbon. So we need to remove electrons from nitrogen and make a bond. Two, four, six, we still need to remove electrons. So let me remove two electrons here and make a bond here. So CN1 negative is going to have this polyatomic ion, CN cyanide. It has this list structure. One thing right now, I'm gonna ask you to please pay attention. If we have elements with, we have odd, covalent compounds with odd number of electrons, like CN, like NO. There are exceptions in Lewis structure that we have. Or if we have like the brown compounds, so like BH3, if you draw BH3, 
you cannot make eight electrons for boron. So there are some exceptions. That is why we need to learn some new methodology, some new theory to work on Lewis structure of compounds. So BH3 or odd numbers, if we have, for example, BE compounds like BEF2, if you draw Lewis structure for BEF2, you see that BE, it cannot make eight electrons. BH3, boron cannot make eight electrons. So that is why there are some exceptions. We don't work on the exceptions. We are going to learn the methodology in our class. Thank you for watching this video. Please work on the, some other polyatomic ions, covalent compounds to make sure you get the concept. Thank you and please watch the, another video regarding polarity of molecules.